Welcome to another very special edition of the Dateline Downtown Podcast. I'm your host, Juan Hernandez, here with my co-host, Ted Shaw. Ted, we have a very special guest with us today. I'd like to welcome to the show Tara Taylor, a UHD star. <laughs> Proud UHD student. Yes. Um, well, thank you for having me here, and um, I'm excited to have this conversation post-election. We've been wanting to get you on for a long time, Tara, and we appreciate all of the input that you put into our print stories. I know our reporters contact you for comment, and we greatly appreciate that. So welcome to the show. Thank you. You're welcome. You are, you're so active both in the UHD community and across the country. Can you just briefly describe what you've been up to lately? Oh, wow. Um, so a lot of people know that I'm fresh off the plane from Washington um, doing the White House internship, which was amazing. And I hope and I have tried to get more of our students to apply for that internship. So um, if you get the opportunity, please apply and we will, the school will work with you to make sure you're, you're taken care of when you're in Washington. But um, as I returned, I did a couple of months of union organizing, which was amazing, and now I have a position with the American Civil Liberties Union, which is also known as the ACLU. Um, they protect your civil rights and your constitutional rights and um, more known for litigation, so they will sue um, the state governments, national governments, and other entities to protect your rights. Um, and it's an amazing position. I'm a community organizer for that organization, and I've been reaching out to students at UHD and other community organizations to work with us to help us protect constitutional rights here in Texas. Awesome. Uh, as, as someone who's engaged in the political process, what do you think are some of the consequences of the voter apathy that we witnessed on Election Day here in Texas? Was the get out the vote drive that unbalanced for Democratic candidates? Yeah, it was. Um, so this is an issue that got me uh, re-involved in politics in 2010. Um, we, of course, in tw 2008, we had a surge of new voters voting for Obama, which was great. Um, however, the message didn't get to those new voters that the president really doesn't have a whole lot of power if he does not have a good Congress. So in 2010, we failed and did not protect him on the congressional side, and um, we we are in the same spot we're in now. Um, that got me reinvolved in politics. In 2010, I said, I am not going to sit by. I got involved in the Obama campaign, and here I am now. But, I mean, get out the vote efforts for Republicans is a lot easier because they are already engaged um, with their economic background. They spend a lot of time um, teaching their children the importance of political participation. Um, from the Democrat side, you have a lot of, of people who are disenfranchised. Usually people who are disenfranchised tend to vote Democratic or independent. And um, some Democrats don't have time to talk about uh, the issues and civic engagement because they're working, they are impoverished, um, or they, they just don't have time. They don't know themselves to teach their children. And uh, in a Republican household, it's kind of something that's ingrained. Mm -hmm. um, in a Democratic household, it's something that needs to be learned. So when you talk about get out the vote efforts, um, when you talk to Republicans about, hey, you know, the election's coming up, this is what I need you to do, it's more of a strategy. Let me yeah. talk strategy with you. Um, and is it more straight ticket? Are they well? More this time to... it is. It was straight ticket. Yeah. I heard from a Republican friend of mine that they pushed the straight ticket vote because there were so many judicial sure. races. I know the Democrats also pushed straight tickets, but maybe not as much. Um, there in in the, amongst the Black community, there has been a resistance to straight ticket voting because we've had some people slide in that did not sure. need to be there, or we had covert. Republicans pose as Democrats and get in that way. So not everyone is okay with straight ticket voting on the Democrat side, um, mostly because some of us haven't done our homework and we don't know who people are. So if we never heard their name before, we're not going to vote for them. Totally understand that. But 
when you talk about get out the vote efforts on a Democratic side, it's more of begging. Uh, and I do not like get out the vote efforts at all. Um, it's it's more begging and coaxing and reminding, hey, come out and vote, or I'll drive you to the polls, or don't forget to vote, and just vote for these people, or just vote straight Democrat. And so those efforts take a lot more time, a lot more manpower, a lot more resources, some of which that the Democrats may not have compared to the other side. So um, it did not work this time. Um, the majority of eligible voters, and that dramatically increased because of Battleground Texas. Um, so we got a surge of eligible voters, but they did not turn out. And so that tactic halfway worked to register everyone, but we did not figure out how to get them to the polls. Um, so to get out the vote efforts, there are there they are a tool, but they do not work in it doesn't work independently sure. in the Democrat in the Democrat side. So I, I, I was interested. I, I was actually uh, block walking for the Democrats on su- Saturday, and they were pushing one candidate. It wasn't right. Yeah. So then you see people who aren't necessarily unified with the uh, the effort yes. um, to get out the vote. You have individual candidates. So in every in every campaign strategy, there is a get out the vote component. So each candidate has a strategy two to three weeks out, probably two weeks out, you're going to spend the entire two weeks Mm -hmm. getting out the vote. Um, And it's probably longer with early voting being two weeks long. So if each candidate is doing their own get out the vote for their themselves, then you, you know, have effectively not educated them about the other candidates. And we already know we have an education problem in the Democrat side and just the impoverished side of the community so that doesn't necessarily help us you know the republicans may be more unified and and they're all working together because people already know who's on the ballot it's important to them they're doing their research so all you have to do at that point is just say hey this is what we need to do to sweep the election and that's what they did they've executed their their strategy and it worked you know and then people start complaining later on that oh um we're you know like now the gop's in a majority of it is Republican. So then the people start complaining. So it's like, well, you didn't do your job to right. get out there and and try to make a change. Because ultimately, people do have a voice. But, you know, I guess for some people it just doesn't click. Mm-hmm. Or they don't have faith in the government. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's just coming from my perspective. No, that's, that's true. Um, a lot of people say, oh, the system is rigged right. and it doesn't matter if it's I broken. vote, I'm still going to mm-hmm. lose. And this election may have proved that to some people. <clears throat> um, however, to me, uh, union organizing has taught me that there are two types of capital there. I mean, two types of power. There's capital, which is a lot of money. And then there's people power, large groups of people. Um, and large groups of peop- people can overpower money so you'll have candidates that are loaded have war chests with millions of dollars for campaigns but at the end of the day you can't buy votes at the end you can spend money trying to get votes but you can't purchase them sure. so it doesn't matter how much if, if if the community does not like a certain candidate it doesn't matter how much money they have to make signs and ads at the end of the day those people are going to make a choice and if you have enough people to overpower the amount of people that the other side has, they are going to win. And that's why every single vote matters. I think one of the races in Harris County, uh, Marianne Perez, she lost by a few hundred votes. So the people that are in her district failed her because, and and maybe she failed herself because she didn't reach out to people who are un so quote unquote unreachable. But your your vote does matter, and think of all the people who are saying their vote doesn't matter. If they all got together, then they would matter. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, um, you know, people are in this, you know, misconception <clears throat> that it's you know everything's rigged, but really it's not. The rigging is making you think that you know, you can't make a difference, and you can't. Mm. I think we should be thankful that we get, have the right to vote, unlike yeah. other countries where that doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, that's very, very true. Um, in Iran, you know, women are in the struggle right now. They can't really do anything uh, there, but 
you know, and, and it, it, it's, it goes across the board. Education is a priority in other countries. They're, they're, they're you know, walking miles and miles and miles to go, go to school. And we hate school. <laughs> like some of us don't. We hate, I'm ready to get out of UHD. And some people would love to be able to learn. Same thing with voting. You know, it just depends on what you're accustomed to. And this is one thing we've taken for granted. On, on election day, I was in a campaign politics class and one of the students who's a poli sci major said she hadn't voted and everybody in the class attacked her and she said well i don't believe that politics affect me and you know how can we get through to people with that mindset yeah because uh, it is going to affect yes it is the problem that we are having and I and when I say we I mean sure. Democrats I am a Democrat <laughs> um, is a messaging problem the Republicans have a branding problem people think they're you know old and outdated Democrats have a messaging problem um, so what that means is is that we are not bringing the issues down to a level where people can understand and I'm gonna go through some of those issues and some of the consequences yeah. But the problem is, is that we did not talk about these consequences before the election. I'm not a fan of talking about, oh, well, you know, if you if you vote, then everything will be great. I want to talk about what happens if you don't vote. Sure. What happens if the other person wins? And we're not talking about this person sucks or we hate this person. But no, like, what are they going to do and how is it going to affect your everyday life? I, and most people don't want to hear about, you know, oh, I'm going to stimulate the economy mm -hmm. because at the end of the day what is that going to do for me on my everyday because i don't care about economy stimulation unless i'm going to get a you know a check an extra check <laughs> <Yes>. somewhere <laughs> so no oh, and then people say well they say the same thing every four years so what, yeah i mean and some the, of that is true and yeah. that's why it's important voter education is important mm -hmm. because then right. you have the ability to say you know Four years ago, you said you're going to do this, and mm -hmm. where have you gotten? Nowhere? Well, maybe you don't need to be in office anymore. Right. Voter education allows us to ask those critical questions instead of just listening. Now I can talk to you, and I have evidence of things you have or haven't done, and that allows me to make a better informed decision. So tell us what, what this election is likely to mean for Texas students and young adults. Wow, so I'm a little worried. I'm, well, As not a little. I. I'm, a, I'm a lot worried. Uh, and so I'm just going to – so I have some some of the platforms from uh, the, the governor-elect and the wow. um, lieutenant governor-elect, and I just want to go through them sure. so we can talk about what's upcoming. And, and I, and I want to talk about that because I want people who didn't vote in this election to understand – what they have done mm -hmm. <laughs> and i don't want to seem all doom and gloom but it is or and, what they haven't done or yeah, yeah. well no i want to say what voted. they have done because not voting yeah. you've is you've, an action yeah you voted itself. technically yeah. um so real quickly i'm gonna go through the numbers um just on turnout so for whites primarily they voted for republicans blacks 90 percent voted for democrats um latinos however 54% voted for Democrats and 44% voted for Republicans. So we have a split there, and that's probably based on um, religion um, and, and morals yeah. surrounding that. Um, so um, this is what we have right now. This is Greg Abbott's platform. And I've only, I'm only going to talk about the things that matter to young people. Um, so one thing he said he's going to do is end Obamacare. Um, we know that Texas is last in health insuring our our citizens um, so Obamacare has increased that um, ending Obamacare would put people who let's say are in school and don't have a job um, that it would take away their health care um, he's gonna fight the EPA um, students who are like in the environmental club um, people you know who very interested in global warming they're going to beat back the regulations that they say are infringing on businesses who effectively are polluting our air and water and and soil like fracking sure. <laughs> um and then greg abbott says he's going to defend strong voter id laws 
Um, if you've been paying attention to the news, we did away with voter ID for about four days, and um, the judge put an injunction on it for this election. So now that this election is over, voter ID is gone. However, our governor, our new governor, says he's going to bring that back. And, and we all know that there are very low cases of voter ID fraud, especially in sure. Texas. However, they see this as a priority, and it is not. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Um, so let's move on to Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick says he is going, and he's he's the, the lieutenant governor. He's the lieutenant governor, but he has more power yes. than the governor, and he is also a Tea Party person so he's kind of the the most dangerous one not as (laughs) not as media exposed right right right. but the power behind the throne yes so to speak so he's the most dangerous one this is the one that we really didn't want to get in because he has the more radical idea ideology so he wants he says he wants to pass strong border security and sanctuary city legislation um so anyone who is undocumented or has family that's undocumented this guy He's he's sending you back home or to some somewhere where that isn't your home, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, so he says he wants to increase border security officers. Um, my job, we did a border tour about two weeks ago, and they said that there's a park there, and all the 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 border security officers and uh, DPS and some of the um, military officers. Um, border patrol. No, not Border Patrol, the uh, National Guard. Texas They're National Guard. all just hanging out in this park because they don't have anything to do. Yeah. There's too many of them there. Um, so he wants to send more. Yeah. Um, and he's going to end in-state tuition for yeah. undocumented students. So the Texas Dream Act. Right. So we have, you know, Isaac Valdez, who sure. will lose his in-state tuition if he has it. And, um, you know, other there's many other students at UHD who will lose their in-state tuition. And then he said he's going to prohibit employment for the undocumented. So if you're undocumented and you're working, you will lose your job, you will lose your tuition, and you'll probably they'll probably try to deport you next. Mm-hmm. Um, so his, his other part of his platform is to reform education and provide more choice. Um, so if we have any non-traditional students at UHD, I myself have a five-year-old who's in public school right now. Um, he said he's going to allow parents to uh, decide if principals should be fired. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's my choice to make, but okay. Um, and he's going to allow parents to choose if schools should be closed. I don't think that's a choice that parents should be making either, by themselves at least. And uh, he has said he is going to extend standard, standardized testing to pre-K. Um, my child right now goes to Crockett Elementary, who is partnered with UHD. Their principal is an alumni here. And um, she gets tested every month. Um, and she is ranked with not only with the students in her class, but nationally. Um, and that will be extended to pre-K. So I'm pretty sure that they're conditioning the little kids to get ready for standardized testing that they, I think they start to take in third grade. I'm not really sure, but he's gonna extend that to pre-K. So um, he's going to pass campus carry and defend the second amendment. <laughs> uh, I am, I am a CHL holder, and I am opposed to campus carry. Yeah. I could not imagine having another student carry their gun, concealed or not, on campus. I well, mean, that's, that's a huge responsibility when it, it comes is. to owning a gun. It's a very huge. It's not even a responsibility that I want. Yeah. I don't even want to take a gun on campus, and yeah. I have the ability to do that. Well, I don't, but if I did, I yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, I think that's just crazy. And he is, uh, then he said he's going to pass open carry. That is something that I'm more afraid of than Mm -hmm. campus carry because um, African Americans don't have the same privilege when it comes to open carry. And when I say privilege, I do mean white privilege, meaning that a white person can open carry and people will be scared, but he won't be bothered. But if a black person open carried, people would be afraid, people would call the police, and the police may shoot him dead. And we've had an instance like that recently where a man was in Walmart holding a pellet gun, Mm -hmm. and someone called the police, police came and killed him. Even though the gun was a shotgun, and it's it's totally legal to open carry. Um, So that's that's, that's very scary to black students and black people in general. Um, He's gonna cut property taxes. Um, that doesn't seem like too bad, right? <laughs> what, what people don't know is that your property taxes 
pay for public schools and we are on a shortage of public school funding right now. Um, public schools is, are getting slashed their, their budget and you know it's making it harder for people to get educated. Um, he's gonna cut wasteful <laughs> he's gonna cut wasteful government spending. So we're talking about Medicaid expansion and things like that, maybe even food stamps. Um, and then he's going to defend life and traditional marriage. So this means he is opposed to um, same-sex marriage. And defending life means he's going to restrict abortion access, which to um, students and young folks who are impoverished, abortion access is important because deciding when you can have a child could mean the difference between you living in poverty for the rest of your life or not, um, especially when you may not be able to afford birth control. Yeah. So, I mean, when you think about when you when it breaks when you break it down like that, yeah, I don't see how most young people, if they did vote, could vote for uh, yeah. either of those two candidates, um, unless you just have some strong <laughs> religious values and you just totally oppose abortion, which Democrats are not pro-abortion no. but pro-choice. So pro-abortion rights, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know, man. I just don't. I feel like if we all got engaged, yeah, it would we would wouldn't have these people in office right now. I myself uh, <laughs> have family that is undocumented, mm -hmm. and you know this is going to be a huge problem for them. I I can't believe that fifty eight percent of Democrats, only fifty eight percent voted for for Democratic governor. I mean that's. So, yeah, it's, I mean, the Latinos, they, they are able to get them to vote for their side, but I'm pretty sure they did not have a conversation no. with those people <laughs> about sure immigration reform. Because yes. um, none, nowhere in their platform says that they want a, a good immigration plan, a plan to citizenship that doesn't no. take 10, 6 However, it's a long process as it is right now, but usually in w in which they have to go back to their country of origin and reapply. Right. Nobody's talking yeah. about that. And if you really want to to help people, sure. and you want to know who's here and what the record is and whatever yeah. excuse that they say they want, they don't want immigrants here. Provide them a way to become citizens that makes sense. So, you know, I'm, I'm worried. I'm really worried, especially here at this school. We have a lot of undocumented students who are paying their own way through college and doing well doing here well. and, you know, productive citizens. And they, you know, they're in jeopardy. Of Some who are already accepted to medical school right. and law school. Right. And they're going to have to pay their way there, too. Yeah. But now it's like they could be in jeopardy of being sent somewhere where they never set step foot on. I could only imagine mm -hmm. if someone tried to send me back to Africa, I'd be <laughs> eaten by a lion. I don't know yeah. what I would do. Uh, s switching gears a little bit, do you think that President Obama should have acted sooner on immigration reform? I do. Um, you know, <laughs> I worked on the president's campaign. I've worked in his White House. He doesn't do everything right, but sure. I know he made he's making concessions. Of course. But you know, this is something at this critical point right now that we should have already, he should have already done an executive order for. Um, and so, you know, he's not perfect. Um, he hasn't done everything right, and he hasn't done everything in a timely manner. But this is something that I think he needs to act on yeah. very quickly, especially now that we have lost the Senate and the House and Texas even further mm -hmm. to Republicans. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Hispanic voters displayed their disappointment by not going to the polls? I don't. No. I don't think that. Um, I think they went yeah. to the polls. They went and yeah. they just, you know, they didn't go, you know, blacks had more. With immigration on, my, on their mind. I don't think they went with yeah. immigration on their mind. Um, I think those that don't show don't aren't aware of what's happening. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, but um, there were not as many Latinos as blacks at sure. the polls. They were both in the less than 20% range, and there was like maybe 2 or 4% less Latinos than blacks. But I think they're not showing up because they don't know what's going on. They don't have enough information. 
And I don't think they're saying, well, ugh, none of this matters and it's all rigged. I think that's maybe the black narrative, but I don't think the Latino narrative is that. But I'm not a Latino, sure. so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is, but I don't think that's the reason because immigration is so important. I think they, if they knew what was at stake, they would be there. Sure. Uh, of course, like you said, ma many people are predicting that the president will act on immigration through executive action. Do you think that this will taint future opportunities for cooperation with the Republican Congress, as Senator Mitch McConnell, McConnell suggested? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we've got to do it anyway. I mean, so. he's going to do it, but and that's why he hasn't done yeah. it, because it was so impossible before it's really going to be hard now and that's why he should have done it before we could have dealt with this already mm. they could have fought over it already i mean they may try to you know do something sure. about it this next session but i mean we could have already at least safeguarded ourselves a little bit yeah and now it's going to be impossible yeah if he does it now i mean the republicans are going to retaliate and and democrats just have no power mm -hmm. they have the house and the senate and it's going to be real easy to pass legislation. So, or impeach him, quite frankly. Yes. <laughs> That's actually my next question. <laughs> yeah. Do you believe that some Republicans are serious about impeaching him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they hate him. They I mean, Mitch McConnell says that he can kind of handle the, the ultra-conservatives, but I don't. He can't handle no. them. I don't, I agree. The ultra conservatives he's talking about are the the Tea yes, Partiers, yes. and no one has a hold on them but Ted Cruz, yes. and he's as, as crazy as they are. <laughs> but um, he, Mitch McConnell, does not have a hold on the regular conservatives. Quite frankly, I don't think they're you know happy with his performance. But no, um, they're they're going to try. I, I, unless they have better I don't think things. Be successful. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not putting that Two past Two thirds him. vote in the Senate. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's two. He has like yeah. two years left, so it would be a waste of time. But they've been doing a lot of crazy stuff lately, like repealing, trying to repeal sure. Obamacare fifty times and wasting our time with that. So I wouldn't. Pa I wouldn't put it past them. But um, they've wanted him out since yeah. day one. <laughs> and I really don't think it's because he's black and I know the blacks are like, "What are you saying, Tara?" <laughs> but I just think it's because they just don't like. Democrats. I don't think it has anything to do with, you know, oh, he's black, so right. let's get him out of here. I just don't think they like his policies. Yeah. They want to be in charge. Yeah. They don't want him to be in charge. I mean, I, w I would do it. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, to wrap this interview up, I was just wondering if you had some insights into what these Democratic defeats might signal for 2016. Yeah, I mean, that's the question coming off of this pummeling we got sure. is what is this going to do is it going to you know is it one of those things where you lose it all and rebuild mm -hmm. is this a lesson learned or is this you know has this further pushed the narrative that you know no matter what we do we're going to lose and nobody cares and um you know that's the question that i think cannot be answered right yeah. now because it all depends on what happens in the next two years, um, how hard the Democrats fight in the Texas legislation, how hard we fight in Congress. Um, that's what's going to matter. Um, and, and, and what actually comes down the pipeline in within the next two years. If we see people getting deported in the next year, if we see abortion clinics closed down and restrictions to, to um, birth control, People are going to be energized, and I think that's what happened, and that's how we ended up in this conversation or in this situation that we're in right now. Is um, we passed a lot of good legislation, and it energized the Republicans to retaliate, um, waving the red flag in front of the bull, as you said earlier. Um, so it depends if they, if if that happens, if somebody raises raises you know our red flag, then we'll sure. come out in full force. But if everything stays the same, mm -hmm. people are going to be lulled to sleep and they're not going to go to the polls. It's a pleasure to have you on, Tara. I hope we have you back soon. Uh, come back and see us. All right, most definitely. I love this relationship that we have.
Do you have any websites, Tara, where we can find you, <laughs> follow you? or? Oh, man, well, you know, half the school follows me on Facebook, yeah. and they know how active I am on Facebook. So you can find me on Facebook at Tara Taylor. Um, if you're interested in my tweeting, which doesn't happen very often, um, you can follow me at, at Tara Intense. And my first name is spelled T-A-R-A-H, and Intense is the second word. So Tara Intense. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. There you have it, guys. And for all the listeners out there, remember, you can always visit our website at datelinedowntown.com slash podcast to catch up with all the previous podcasts that we've done, including this one with Tara Taylor. Tara, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, all.